In this video you're going to learn how to draw a 3D model in DirectX 12 and make it spin. I first created a rabbit model in Blender and exported it as an OBJ file. The OBJ file is a text file that describes the triangles in the model. In C++ we're going to load the OBJ model data and store it in a model struct. At the top of our file we will create a load model function. The model struct has two lists, one for the vertices and one for the indices. Let's make a model example. This is a rectangle model that consists of two triangles. The red text tells the position of all the corners. The vertex list for this rectangle will hold a list of all the positions. The index list describes the triangles by pointing into the vertex list. So the first triangle will be created from vertex 0, 1, 2 and the second triangle will be created from vertex 0, 2, 3. We have now loaded in our model from our hard drive to CPU memory, but we need to get our lists to the GPU memory to be able to draw it. This is a timeline how to upload a model to the graphics card. First we load in the model from our hard drive to CPU memory, which we have done. Then we need to copy that data to a DirectX upload resource, which is a resource that is both accessible from the CPU and GPU, but it is slow. Then we need to copy that data to a DirectX default resource, which is only accessible to the GPU, and this memory is fast. So we will get good performance when drawing our model. In C++, we're going to create four buffers. The vertex buffer and index buffer, and their corresponding upload buffers. First, we create the vertex buffers, and in the resource description, we tell how much memory our buffer is going to use. And in the heap properties, we tell if the buffer is going to be stored in default memory or upload memory. Then here, we create the buffers. The two buffers has the same resource description, but different heap properties. We do the same thing for the index buffers, but we're going to change the resource size. Then we're going to copy our CPU memory to the upload buffer with a mem copy. The map gives us a memory pointer to the buffer. Now we're gonna add some commands to the command list to copy the data from the upload buffers to the fast default buffers. First we're gonna create a barrier to make sure the resources are in copy destination state. Then we're gonna copy over the data from the upload resource to the default resource. Then we're gonna create a new barrier transitioning our vertex buffer to vertex state and our index buffer to index state, which is the correct state they should be in when drawing. Then we will close the command list and execute the commands on the GPU and wait until they're finished. Then in our drawing code, we will set the vertex buffer and index buffer each frame and call the draw indexed instance to draw with an index buffer. One thing we also need to change is in our pipeline state, we're going to tell that our vertex has a position and normal. And we're also gonna update our shader code. The vertex shader takes in a VS input, which is our vertex data, and this code makes the model spin. And in our pixel shader, we're gonna simulate a light from the top. We will now run it, but you're gonna see one more issue that we're gonna fix. You will notice that the order of our rabbit arms gets wrong. The arms are suddenly visible through the body when the rabbit turns away. We want it to instead look like this. The reason this issue is happening is because of the order that the triangles are drawn. The arm triangles are probably quite late in the model, which makes them drawn top. So to fix this issue, Games uses a depth buffer which is a texture that is the same size as a window, where every pixel stores a depth value between 0 and 1. So if a triangle's pixels are behind previous pixels, it will not show. In C++, we will create our depth buffer resource. In our resource desk, we set the size to be the same as the window. And in our heap properties, we set this gonna be in default memory, so it's gonna be fast. We also create a depth stencil view descriptor heap, which will hold some extra information about our depth buffer. And here in the bottom, we will create the depth stencil view descriptor. Then every frame, we will clear the depth buffer with the value of 1. And in the set render target, we will also pass in our depth buffer. We will also need to set the depth format in our pipeline state. And in our depth stencil state, we set depth enable to true and only to draw pixels that has a depth value that is less than previous pixels. And now let's run it. All code is available in the description. 